Uh, so we're talking about community arts programs today, and uh, I just brought up the, uh, the application form and information form. So I just want to walk through that with you quickly first, just so you're aware of what that application form asks of you and uh, how you meet cri uh, eligibility criteria for this program, okay? So the goal of it is certainly to uh, support community-based arts organizations. So these are organizations, and here's our definition that have the creation and representation of works of art as a primary activity. That means uh, that it has to be one of the key things that organization, that organization does. Um, and it has to have a history of doing those things. So that it's composed of at least two individuals or groups, uh, and uh, operates in a not-for-profit capacity, and as a community-based organization. So that would typically be run by volunteers or have a, uh, a, a not a professional administrator, although typically is the word there. Some organizations that are community-based actually do pay someone to do some admin work and stuff like that. We don't expect that you know that work isn't done or, or that people yeah. aren't paid for that to hire. And we have things like organizations or groups would have like a JCP person out for the summer or something like that. These things. And that has internal oversight of the group's finances and can produce an annual financial statement. And it's very similar as well, that's a group, this is an organization, it's very similar except an organization would have a board of directors overseeing its operations. So could I, could I ask you, what is a JCP? I don't know what JCP Oh, a job creation program. Sorry, oh, right. I should okay. use that. Okay. Uh, and, and sometimes some, some organizations in small communities, for example, may get uh, funding to have someone out for summer to run their festival. Oh, I see. And it's, it's often students or it's a person in the community. Right. Short-term contract. Okay. Uh, so, as well as uh, the, these definitions, residency and uh, age and activity requirements are also there. So basically, they must have been active in Newfoundland and Labrador for a minimum of one year, your organization or your group, before you can submit an application. So we actually ask for proof that if you're a new applicant, that you've actually been around and been doing things for at least a year. And uh, you must be actively engaged in a community-based community -based arts activity within that year. So that means that you can't just be having meetings or talking about things, you actually have to be doing things in the community. And must have at least half its members or board members for organizations residing in the province. So you actually have to be here. And finally, uh, uh, at least half the uh, members of the group uh, must be over 18, 18 years of age or older. So any questions on any of that, we can you know, always contact us if you need clarification. I always encourage new applicants to contact us for some clarification. So the application deadline for the Community Arts Program is September 30th, and you will find out on your results at, uh, on December 1st. The, uh, it's important to include uh, on the application deadline a complete application and seven copies of it. I know that's a lot. Uh, but we actually need that because we need to send them out to the assessors and we can have up to seven assessors uh, reviewing your application. So that's why uh, we do it that way. The, uh, uh, this program is assessed by a multidisciplinary committee, is what I call it. So there's one person representing each arts discipline. So, you know, of dance, film, multidiscipline, music, theater, writing, or uh, visual art. And they, uh, uh, so it's one person representing that discipline at the table. And uh, depends on the applications that come in. We may not get any multidisciplinary one, we may not get any film, so we would have a film one of the other. That's how it works. Can I ask, is this future projects or ongoing projects? Because I've got an ongoing project at the moment. The, would it be possible to get something back, possibly, as a result of If the project's completed, yeah. you can only ask for, for funds for things that will be happening after December. Right. If this is something happening before that, yes. then yes. no, they will have to be looking for a future. Right, okay, thank you for that. Yeah. So the maximum uh, funding available is 75000 in the community arts program, and each applicant can request up to 5000 because that's the maximum grant we can offer. All right. Or in the minimum to 1000 if, uh, uh, you know, if the total request is less than that. Or the total request is less than that. I'm sorry. Uh, so applicants went through the program, you can, if you come to the community arts, you can apply to other arts and known programs, like the uh, professional project grants program, annual operating program, 
uh, the sustained or the sustaining program or the school touring program actually as well. And just sort of All right, whoa, let's look at that for a Let's look at program guidelines now. So um, applications must be submitted on the official form. Now, sometimes people like to make their own forms. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> our application form is available on our website, and it's there as a writable PDF. The best thing to do is save it, uh, open it, and actually tell you when you open it to make sure you save this to your computer, your desktop, because if you don't, you start typing on that form, uh, it doesn't save. Yeah. Even though you think you're saving, it's not saving. So some, so you could write your whole, fill in the whole form, and then go get it, and it's gone. So please don't do that to yourself. Nobody needs that kind of frustration. Just download it to your computer, and then you always have it. And you also have the record of it that you'll want to fill with you. Um, incomplete or late, late applications will not be considered. Our deadlines are very real. Uh, uh, so uh, if it's not in by that date, so that means at 4.30 p.m. on the deadline, if you're delivering it, it has to be here. Or if you're uh, mailing it, by uh, uh, it has to be mailed by the application deadline date, so that's September 3rd, it has to be posted on September 3rd. So please remember that. And all, and if you're mailing it, seven copies, seven copies. Or if you're dropping it off, send copies again. Now, if you have don't have access to a photocopier, many small organizations don't. If you want to come down before the deadline and get a copy, I can do that for you. But on the deadline date, we won't have time to do that because it's very busy here on that date. Okay? So just remember that as well. Uh, we do encourage applicants to come and book a meeting. So after the session today, if you want to contact me and book a meeting with me to discuss the uh, application your application further, or to read through your project description and what you want to do, more than happy to do that. You can actually book a, uh, a meeting time on our website. If you go to the front page there, it's actually scheduled a meeting there. You just select me when you go in there, and it'll show you all the times I'm available when you want to book, and you can take a time. I'll get an email telling me that you booked a time, and uh, you'll get an email telling you that you booked a time. And if, I think you need to get a reminder that there are times coming up. Uh, so, uh, applicant, applications must be typed or hand printed. Absolutely. So that's why we have the right of the PDF. That's what most people use now. It's very convenient. Uh, only one application per group organization uh, per application deadline. Now, Jim and I had a chat about this earlier. Uh, it doesn't have to be just one project. Really, this is looking at everything you're doing from December 1st until November 30th of next year. So, in some instances, uh, an organization or group may be doing just one project, and that's what they do, that's their main thing, that's all they want funding for. But sometimes they may do several things. Uh, they may do several workshops. They may do some workshops, and then they're going to present something. It, it depends on what you do. But basically, think of it as a year, and what do I want to do in this year, and uh, accomplish this year. Can, can uh, in my particular area, which is drama, mm -hmm. can one include workshops? As well as productions? Yes. Good. Yes. Good. That's good. Yes. Thank you for that. No problem. Um, other sources of income. I'll talk about budgets in detail later, but uh, always uh, the arts, arts and now can only, uh, uh, it is typically only a partial funder. The maximum grant this program is $5,000. Many projects cost much more than that. We know that. Mm -hmm. And have other people getting in kind. Is, is acceptable as well, and, uh, and, and you know services and things like that that you can get to make the project happen, that's all acceptable within that context of your budget. And that's something we consider support for your project as well. Uh, again, seven copies, I say that a lot, <laughs> of the application form, and, uh, and a complete application form has, is, a complete application is the application form, a detailed project description, a history of the organization or group that's required in this program, a list of the organization's board or group members, a budget, and resumes and bios of the professional artists or other key individuals planning and developing the program. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of uh, information there, but it's, uh, it's not, uh, it, it's basically everything that's asked for. We don't ask for anything we don't need. I will say that like when we ask for things, it's because assessors, when they sit down to review these, have asked for these things or noted these things. 
I don't have this information. Can you make sure the application for my campus? Thank you. Um, applicants are encouraged to include support material if you have it. If you don't, it's fine. Uh, and that could be posters or programs from past work. It could be uh, uh, images from uh, from past, uh, if you're doing visual art, past exhibitions or workshops that have happened before. Just something to show that like, we've done this before. And not a whole lot. Uh, I'll talk about the application form here to came out to, to submit it. Uh, and one copy of a financial statement, and that's for groups or organizations. And that has to include revenue, expenses the, for the last completed year, and as well a uh, surplus deficit for your last completed year, and also accumulated surplus deficit. So those are the key points that have to be in there. If they're not, I'll um, come with them. Well, if you're starting up, obviously, from scratch, that's what that's, that's it's that's going to be pretty limited. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but you have to have at least, remember, you have to have at least one year under your belt, so there's definitely something that happened in a year. Oh, yes. That yes. may have had some funds through. Okay. Yeah. And these don't have to be done by an accountant or anything like that. They no. can be done in-house. Okay. That's exactly uh, Retroactive applications can't be considered. Sorry, Dave. No, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Applicants, uh, we will contact you when we get your application within two weeks after the deadline to let you know that we've, uh, we've gotten it. Uh, so if you don't hear from us a couple, within a couple of weeks after, uh, give me an email just to make sure we've gotten it because uh, uh, you know, sometimes the name is so. And presumably if you are accepted, um, you automatically go on to the, you know, the, the regular. I've noticed this from Joshua, you know, he sends it out just about every week. What, oh, what oh, the other program is doing, so it helps, yes, it helps in the promotion of your, yes. your setup, which sounds good. Yep. Yep. So, RSNL funding uh, will only support travel uh, based on both the Compact and October reports, so that's <coughs> fine if you have travel involved in there. I'll get into that more. Final reports on past grants must be submitted. Um, really, the, 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 uh, the final report, you can have one overdue, uh, so that means that you've got a grant in the past and you're applying for a new one. If you have more than one, we won't accept your application. Uh, that's your group organization. But if you have one, it's fine. You can submit your application on the deadline. But if your grant is successful, we will not release a check on that until we get the final report in, and Arts and Health staff have signed off on it and confirmed that all is fine with that application, with that final report, and the project went as, 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 presented, as, as it was supposed to. So that's important to remember. Um, Basically, let's look at the application form itself. That's the information on it. So this section is really just information. It's just who you are, how we can contact you, and uh, we'll, we'll maintain this in a database uh, when you submit this. But your brief, your project title is important. Do try to give it a title of some kind. It helps just to identify it. It can titles change sometimes over the course of the project. The brief summary of activities you are seeking funding for. Well, I will say first, the, the name, the group organization, the note here, whoever you put here as the organization or as the group, that's who you make the check out to if you're successful. So you need to make sure that organization can cash the check yeah. now, before when you're doing it now, as opposed to later we can't do anything about it. That's not our rule, that's, that's, uh, that's the Auditor General's Department who reviews us. The auditors say, you can't, you can't write a check to someone who isn't the applicant. So make sure the name that's there is the applicant you want and that, they, uh, that that person or that group or in the can cash a check. Uh, on the brief summary of activities, um, that's one or two sentences on it. Now we actually use that as the basis for a media release and Joshua would love it if you gave him a great quote to use in his media release about your project. Two or three lines that really uh, would make people interested in in it and understand it better when we send out the media release. It's really useful if we do that. And Josh really appreciates it when people do. Don't you, Josh? I do. <laughs> Hello, Joshua. <laughs> Meet the boss. Uh, the project start date and end date. Uh, really, uh, the definition of a project is that it has a beginning and an end. That's, that's simply it. So the start date has to be, it can't be before December 1st of the year you're applying. So December 1st, 2016 this year. The end date, typically these projects will end by November 30th, 2017, this right. year. So by November 30th. So keep that in mind. 
And many people just put in the full year because they're doing mm -hmm. it. Others say, well, I know it's only going to be a summer project. So, and, and I'm up only from August, the second week of August to the last week of August. So I'll just put that in. And that's fine. As long as it's within that year, it's, it can be any time within that. And so it's, it's, it's up to you to decide that, uh, what works for you. The, um, uh, it is important to remember that when you do, if you think they may fluctuate, give yourself some legal room at the, at the end, probably. Uh, because um, when you submit your final report, your end, your, your, and when I decide if you owe a final report, it's based on the end date you tell me. So three months after that, your final report is due. So if you apply again, I may be looking for that, right? Uh, and, and also, if you, uh, if you submit, when you submit a final report, if you're successful, um, I'm looking at these dates as when the project has, and they can change. Just let me know if they change. Uh, many projects change dates, so it's just not hard. All right, let's look at the uh, what we need here. These are the attachments, and I'll get into these more in, de in more detail. But uh, so the detailed project description. I'll get into a little bit about uh, later about what how you should approach the approach you should take to writing your project description. But for this one, just basically what we need. So what do you want to do through this project? What do you, what is the project? What are you doing? With it? How will you uh, structure, staff, and operate this program, this project? I'm sorry, so it will meet this goal. Where and when will the project happen? Provide a specific timeline for this project. Uh, who will be the key participants in delivering the project? Who want files for those? Uh, how will this project benefit the mandate of your group organization or the people you're working with or whatever you're doing that way? Uh, what, pro uh, what benefits will this project bring to your local community, your organization, and the people who participate in the project? Because this is community arts, our goal is connecting arts and community. So the uh, checklist here, so that's again what you need to include in your uh, in, uh, attachments you need to include with your uh, application. And uh, I've gone through those. Now support material, I said I'd say a little more about. Here's the, uh, here's the detailed kind of overview on support material. So it is optional, you don't have to include it. But if you do, you have to include seven copies of whatever you're giving me. So if it's a disk with images, I need seven disks with those images on them. If it's, uh, if it's programs, seven, you can photocopy them. If you set them, I would be all color, beautiful ones. You don't necessarily need that. It's more information that this is providing. Now, if you do have posters left like over, you want to, well, not posters, not big posters, small posters <laughs> that you want to send me, uh, we'll certainly take those. Or uh, uh, if you have uh, images as well, you can do images that you want to send. Most people send things digitally now. Uh, and so I get a lot of discs with images or a, a poster that we did on it. Things like that. I see a lot of those. Or a short video. Now I, I always warn, I'll say this again, but uh, if, you're, if you're doing a video of a play or a dance piece, be very careful because that really needs to be of good quality. Mm -hmm. Because the media, the medium of dance and film is so different. Like a second on stage is a second, but a second on film feels like five seconds. So it tends to slow things down a bit. And uh, so just be aware that you want to have good quality. Now, I've seen it work both ways. I've seen people submit ones, and uh, assessors have reviewed it and said, no, you know, doesn't, you know, oh my god, it's so slow. And I've seen a dance piece one time where they weren't really clear in the project description, and like, people weren't really getting it, but then they had a video in it. Once they saw the video, the assessor said, oh, OK, now I see. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Let's support that. So uh, support material, it's important to, to put in good quality. It is important. Yeah. No, so, so, so. Well, it's optional, as it says. Yeah. So is, is your application weakened if you don't include that? Or it depends on the application. Have you ever seen an application rejected because there was no support material? So, not just because of that. Okay. But I would, just, I would say that I've seen applications rejected because they didn't seem to understand it enough. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. So, so, for clarification, if you think you know, the easiest thing to do might be just to show them what we're doing. Sure. And that's what the dance people thought. Right. Because uh, they were doing a lot of dance, technical dance terms yeah. in, in the description. Uh, but when they showed them what we were doing, they were doing, they got it. So I would look at it that way. Uh, now, like I said, most people, the vast majority, include something. Sure. Yeah. But it depends on the nature. Like if you're applying to write something or just to, to create something, then they'll, they'll want to see something if you're, if you're creating. They'll want to see that you can do this, and they'll want to see probably a sample of what you're working on now. Okay. Gotcha. 
Uh, online links for videos, it's a new thing people are doing. They're posting things on Vimeo or things like that because videos are big. So trying to fit a video on a disc or probably, you know, a full length or something like that, even shorter films, is hard. So uh, more and more people are posting them on Vimeo or some other video or even YouTube if they don't care about copyright and saying, here you can see it here. And that's another thing that people are doing with videos of plays and things like that too, I've seen. Is that we have a short snippet of a, a piece from our play that was shot nicely and that we're proud of and that's been edited. Right. So, uh, you know, here's, here's a link. And, and the, okay. the, the accessories are fine with that as well. And that costs you nothing. Okay. If you've already got it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sure. That's the link to the internet. But that's, that's a good thing to do too. And also, if you have uh, links on your website. Yeah. As well. yeah. The accessories used to be kind of funny if you just put in a, if it's just the website, but they've come around on that because more and more people are using digital media to show things. The one thing I'd say that you know don't do is please don't send me things in Dropbox or Google Plus or these kind of uh, document sharing uh, situations because the accessories when they do that you, they, they they actually have to give you permission to download them so they can and they they're supposed to be anonymous until uh, until we release at the end if you want to know the accessories. Very uh, good. If you require support materials sent back, if you sent us things you want it back, uh, you need to send a self address envelope and send it over with that as well. The, uh, the declaration now, uh, this is just confirmation that what you're writing here is true, that you understand it, and that you understand that this is a competitive process and uh, that you know you may not get it right as well. We, we basically want you to know that up front as well. Because uh, it's difficult to put a lot of work into a grant and not get funded. I know that. I've done it. <laughs> it's hard. Um, budget information. So this is the budget form we give you on the application form. It is not one you have to use. If you have, uh, if you have one that works better for you, and many organizations have budgets already done that they're working from this year, that's fine to submit that instead. You can just write see attached on this. Or, and that's fine, and, and I'll use that budget. Uh, it's good often to keep that page in there, just write the amount requested from the personnel at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It just gives me a quick reference when I'm reviewing it to know, okay, they're asking for this much. Where's the rest of the budget? Oh, here it is. Here's that's just helpful that way. Uh, the budget notes. So, just specific to this program, maximum request is 5000 The capital cost of lighting, sound, equipment, computers, buildings, uh, things like that. Anything really that has a, a, a light more than three years that's not consumed within a project uh, would not be eligible for uh, for funding. But lighting equipment and things like you can certainly grant those. So there is rental opportunities within projects. Uh, fees and travel can only be for individuals over 18 years of age uh, because we actually do get youth based groups in this program, so it actually is quite relevant to this program. And our travel rates right now, so mileage is. 36.4 cents per kilometer right now. It changes with the provincial rate. So you can check that online if you just Google the province of Newfoundland mileage rate. We'll come up with that. Uh, we update it on our forms quarterly when they do, uh, but uh, right now that's there. The per diem is $49 per person per day in province and 55 out of province. We don't have an accommodations rate for hotels and that because that changes so often. But if you do stay with a uh, relative or in someone's private home, you can request $25 for that. And those are the standard for that sort of thing. So, Arts and L, this is our mandate. So it is a not-for-profit crown agency. So we're created, uh, there's actually a, a bylaw, by the, by the uh, if there's an act, we're created by an act, uh, by the province. Uh, and our mission is to foster and promote the creation and enjoyment of the arts for the benefit of all the Landers and Labradorians. So we have a volunteer board of 13, appointed by government, and reflecting regional representation, so geographic regional representation, I think it's. It includes 10 professional artists, uh, each representing a specific sector, so dance, film, theater, etc. Uh, and one community arts person, so that person actually typically sits on this committee, our community arts rep, and one business rep with an interest in the arts. And the, there is a representative from the Department of Tourism, Culture, and Rural Development as well. And that person's not voting. It's typically the, uh, uh, the, the director of culture takes that position. 
The Arts Fund receives an annual grant from the province to support a variety of granting programs, program delivery, offered office administration communications. So that's our mandate. That's what we have to do with the funds we get. It also seeks support from the public and private sector. And we actually have uh, a couple of programs that are supported through the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development, right now, Arts Arts and School Touring. So we have had programs in the past that have had funders, and we've had a, a program at one time the, uh, that was funded by a, a corporation as well. Uh, Newtel, it used to be Newtel, now it's got no Bell Line, and the Line, the Bell Line. Now, they had a program called uh, 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 the uh, a program for basic arts for community technology. And uh, so we had that program as well for a while. So we've had other funders besides the province as well, at different times. So these are the programs we offer, <coughs> and, and who can apply to each one. So you'll see that the community arts program is community-based uh, not-for-profit arts groups and organizations. And the, uh, and the professional project grants, individual artists and groups. When we say groups, we mean things like a band or a theater troupe, just a couple of artists together, but have a name that they go under. Um, school touring is for professional artists, groups, and organizations. Uh, professional artists travel fund is professional individual artists and groups. And sustaining is for professional not-for-profit arts organizations, and so is the annual operating. The difference here is that the sustaining offers three years of funding, and the annual operating just one. So many organizations in annual operating want to kind of develop their program to get into sustaining. That's the most, you know, ongoing. That's kind of the top of where you want to go as an organization. And I have actually had an organization move from being a community-based organization into being an annual operating client. So sometimes that happens with organizations. They can move to change the way they do their work to become more community-based and more professional in as well. Would you mind having a quick little chat about how a community group went to the annual operating grant, like what were the specific circumstances Oh, no there? trouble at all, actually. The, 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 the difference between the community one and, and that, so they started out, uh, I can what the organization was, was Trail Sales and Tunes. So they started out being very community focused. It's a community festival, and uh, they were still paying artists and bringing them in, but, this, but they were run by a volunteer board, completely by a volunteer board, and that was, they were doing everything. They weren't, they had a, uh, they had a, a, an artistic director, but they weren't really paying that individual, although they were doing a lot of work. And then as they developed over a few years, they started to get more eligibility for more uh, uh, federal funding and provincial funding as well, as well as the funding they were getting from us. And really, their model changed, where they were able to hire a, uh, a, uh, an administrative person. They started paying uh, a contract to their artistic director, and they, uh, and they started uh, uh, and they were still doing already like paint profession arts and things like that, but they started doing more of that at the end as well. Sure. So really a model change. And when I yeah. looked at what they were doing, and I usually I can tell by financial statement where you fit. Uh, but I could see that those costs were there, and I said, well, maybe you're actually here. And so we moved them into that one, and they were successful there as well. But it's, that's, how, that's how it's changed. It's, it's not easy to do that. Sure. And, and, and our funding, uh, it is it's very small and community, so it's, you're probably not going to do it based on our funding. But other funding models, other funding opportunities that are out there. Uh, I, I don't know if you can so much of your funding. I'm looking at your sponsorship, really, you know, your support. Yes. You know, and that's equally valuable for me. No, absolutely. So, uh, so grant writing. So your application form. Let's get back to that. So I've gone through the application form. So your project description. We talked on briefly. We'll do more here. Support material and the project budget. And again, I'm going to say this many times, seven copies. <laughs> and the deadline is September 30th. And if that deadline is uh, on a holiday or a weekend, it goes to the next business day. Okay. All right. Uh, so the application form. So first of all, read, read the whole thing. I've gone through it with you already. But make sure you read it before you do it. Write anything. Just go through the whole document. And, uh, and, and make sure you understand everything that's requested there. Because if you don't, send me an email, give me a call, I can often answer that question very quickly. And the application form should be really the first thing you read and the last thing you complete, because really you want to get understand what you want to do there, and then complete it. I get many people get the form wrong, get this done, and they get halfway through and say, oh, should I be doing this? And that happens a lot. Uh, hand printer type, the online form is there. Make sure it's signed. 
if it's uh, uh, because in this program it's only groups or organizations that would require you to put in a financial statement, uh, only one person has to sign as a representative of the organization or the group. In other programs, like project grants, if there's two people named on the application, they both have to sign. But you don't have to worry about that. They're fine. Um, make sure the start date is after December 1st for what you're asking for. And read the budget notes section uh, carefully. We did that already. Mm -hmm. Ensure all copies, support materials, and a financial statement are postmarked by September 30th or delivered to the Arts Mill office by 4.30 p.m. on September 30th. So you send them or you drop them. Uh, required attachments. So a, a description of your group's organizational history, mandate structure, work completed, feature mm -hmm. performers, whatever you've done. Like uh, you have a list of uh, uh, workshops <laughs> that have been done, and that's great. Something like stuff like that. Just an overview. It should be about a, you know a half page or one, no more than about a page, page and a half most, to, uh, to kind of get that there. It's not it's not meant to be a uh, you know a full history of everything you've ever done. It's just a good overview of the organization. Uh, detailed description of your project events for the coming year. So this is what you want to do in that 12 month period, certainly. Um, uh, be as specific as you can about dates, personnel, um, specific events, where they'll happen, as much of that as you can. I'll get into that more. A uh, list of your current board or group members, including residency information. That just means the city, the town they live in. It's all really good. Okay. Uh, a detailed annual budget for the group organization for the upcoming fiscal year or the specific project you're asking for, whatever works there. Uh, and the application form one can be used if it's nice and simple. If you have something more complex or if you have something already prepared, you can submit that as well. Uh, updated resumes, bios for key individual artists featured, and uh, so key staff, volunteers, artists. Really, like, so if you have an administrator, we just want to know that they've done administration here before. If you have an artist, we want to know that that person has experiences that they're visual artists and they have experiences in visual artists. That's what we're doing. We, you know, we're not necessarily demanding that, uh, we're expecting uh, full artistic resumes from all these people. We know that this is community artists. Um, and, uh, and, and sometimes you don't know. Uh, Jim asked me earlier, what, you know, we're a year out. We know we want to do the workshops, but we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. And my response was, get it. Learn as much as you can, find out you know, if you have plans of who you'd like to do or what types of, for example, workshops or projects you want to do by September 30th by the deadline. If you find out something later, before you know, early November, let me know, because I may be able to tell the assessors that. Uh, if, uh, if, you, if it's stuff that's happening like not until next November, because that's possible, you, you may not know. And so you just have to go ahead and offer the most information you can. And, and that's fine. We, we've had that in all our programs, so their deadline makes something that's like over a year, it's not a year before that person will know. So, yeah. assessors understand that, and you can't have everything in the book. Yeah. And uh, one copy of the financial statement for the organization, and again, uh, that has revenues, ex revenues and expenses, surplus deficit for the last year, and accumulated surplus deficit. And additional attachments, any support, yeah, if you want to include those. So the project description, and I actually word the one in the community arts like this, is just the W5 approach. You know, it's, you know, what you want to do, don't try to get too fancy, just try to explain in detail, in detail what you want to do. It should take you no more than a page to do that if it's a project. If it's a full year, maybe a couple of pages, depending on how much you're doing. And, and how you're going to do it. So what and how you're going to do these things. And then who will be working on the project? Who are the key players? Who do you want to use? Who are they? Are you using professional artists? Who are they? Uh, uh, who's going to administer it? Who are the people that are producing it? Who are the producers? Who's producing it? And have they done this before? Uh, where? So where will it happen? Uh, is it touring? Will it, will it be performed? You know, do you know where you're going to show this if it's done? If you're going to do a presentation? Do you know that yet? That's an important thing. You know. Assessors want to know that haven't had that. And when, obviously, um, and and when you know to make sure it fits within the next year after December first, and why? That's usually the hardest one. Why do you want to do this? But really, you know, think about your mandate, um, the reasons. Like, if you have membership, are they looking for this kind of information? Do they want this kind of training? Do they want this kind of event? The community you're working in, where is it, what is this, what benefits is this bringing to them? Uh, how is that important to the community you're working in? That sort of thing. 
things. So it's not as hard as a, as a base team approach where we say, well, why do you want to do this? You just bring it back to you know, what your organization is about. And support materials. So again, seven copies. I've said, I think I've said it seven times now, so no one should forget that. Make sure, uh, if you submit reviews, make sure they're good ones. Uh, you'd be surprised. I've, I've gotten ones where they aren't good, and I said, why did you include that? Uh, images should be of good quality and in a digital format, of course, it's, it's, it's best. Um, we can't take original like, artwork or anything like that either, so be aware of that. Uh, uh, again, they include a video for play or dance, unless it's a good quality or edited, and you can always put that online. Manuscripts uh, must be tightened if you're including those. Make sure press clippings are legible because they often get photocopied a lot if you have good press clippings. And you must include a uh, self addressed stamp envelope if you want it returned. Now, the project budget. Um, when you do your budget, after you've done everything, your product description, and you know what you want to do, and you've got a good sense of what it's going to be and where it's going to happen. These are all the details you need, really, before you start your budget. Because your budget is just, you know, okay, so if I'm having it at this place, what does that cost? If I'm traveling here, what does that cost? It really lays out for what the budget is going to have to be for you. So, um, uh, so, so make sure you have a clear idea of what your project is going to be before you start doing your budget. Uh, capital costs can't be covered. We'll about that. Quotes, if, you're, if you have costs over $1,000, it's, it's often nice if you can get a quote to get a quote. Uh, sometimes if you have a lot of sound equipment, uh, you know, companies will give you a quote on that. That's how you find out what you're going to pay anyway, you ask them. Uh, online is great. A lot of people, art supplies and things like that, you can get quotes on that online because most people purchase them uh, online as well. So it's, it's easy to do that. And uh, you can use your own budget form, but you know, I say keep it simple and legible. I get some odd ones sometimes where people are counting down or they give me a, a multiple budgets, but, but sometimes I have to decipher to figure out what is the actual budget they, budget they want me to see here. Uh, but just keep it simple and, and, and clean in the format. Uh, try to be as exact, exact as possible. Like I said, if you do a little research and find out these art supplies cost this much, you can actually give me an actual price for that, as opposed to everything ending in zero, zero. You know, uh, you know supplies, $500, that kind of thing. Take a little time to do a bit of research help show that you've done the work, and, uh, and, and uh, assessors appreciate that. They really do. Um, make sure you check your figures twice, and, and I always say that, but you know, you know, I've made mistakes on things, I don't know, everyone has. You, you, you think you've checked it twice, and, uh, and, and then there's always a mistake. Uh, Artsnet requires that other contributions, uh, so these can come from other funders. They can also be in kind. They can be generated by a project, box office, Guaranteed sales. Uh, you know, you may have a benefactor saying, "I'm going to give you the theater. I'm mm -hmm. going to give you the space for you know anything like that." In kind stuff as well. Work by members. You know, right. In kind as well. That's all. Uh, you can say that in there. This is covered. This is what we're giving, and this is it's an in kind expense. This mm -hmm. is a donation. This is whatever you can say that. As well. And if you're not familiar with developing a budget, uh, certainly call us and, and, and ask for help. We can help you. Or talk to someone else who will be familiar with it as well. Um, I read the budget notes, of course. Let's see what else we have there. OK, so just some general, final general tips. Um, it's really good, even if you're a good writer, to have someone else read over your project description and application. And just add another set of eyes on it. Because uh, as, we, as we write, we, we see what we think, we, what we want to see, and sometimes we miss things. So just for editing, it's always good to have a conversation with eyes on it. Uh, get your application in early, uh, if you can. Uh, if you want to come in and book an appointment to bring it in and go through it all with me before you submit it, I'm happy to do that. Uh, we can do that. Uh, we won't do it on the deadline day. <laughs> Any time before that, we are more than happy. Uh, check your budget finger figures. Uh, remember, everyone wants to give you a grant. They really do. Uh, and uh, so, you know, give them everything they can. The assessors don't want to say no. They're forced to say no because we don't have enough money to be honest. So mm -hmm. it, it's difficult on them. And But they really do. So if you have a, a tell a story with your project that's interesting and exciting to them, they're like, oh, they're people. They get excited about things that sound interesting and fun and, you know, that they like. 
Uh, so try to tell a story with your budget prescription. That sometimes competition can be tough. It, there's no question. At 75,000 there, we'll easily get twice that in requests often. So that means that you may get a reduced grant, you may not get all you asked for, or you may not get grant. Don't get discouraged. It's, it's, it takes a few sometimes to get through here. And sometimes, even if you think you're doing well, and you, uh, you may run into a, a year where you suddenly don't get funded, and that's happened before as well. And all the programs I see this happen as well. So uh, it's an up and down kind of process sometimes. But uh, you know, uh, come, if you don't get funded, definitely come and get your feedback. Call me, and I'll give you. I'll tell you. We keep notes on what they say. And, you know, they're not they're not criticisms. Not art, some people think we give artistic criticism, we don't. But we give notes on what they liked about this project or what they thought was, they had questions about or what they thought was not as strong as other applications they were looking at in this project based on the criteria for the program. And even if you do, actually, it's good to get feedback as well to find out what was right about your project or, or what, what about it did they seem to like because that's a good clue for going forward. Oh, okay, so I did that. The way I presented it, like, sometimes they'll be specific and say the way they presented the information about the program in the detail, uh, you know. So do you get a commentary on what you submitted? You can, yes, yes, you right. will get it. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. So, and there's just my contact information, and this is all on the website as well, and every, everywhere you look on the website, this is the information. And the application form is on the website as well. And, uh, and this presentation will be on the website as well. So you'll, uh, we're packing up the website with everything you need.